The holidays are a time for rest, relaxation, and playing Dwarf Fortress in a more casual way. Which is why I've spent the past couple weeks messing around with a vacation fortress in a brand new world and haven't recorded any footage or taken any real notes. It's been pretty nice taking a break and playing the game the way I used to before YouTube, but now that the fortress I've built pretty much matches the idea I had in my head when I embarked, I think it's time for me to show you what I've been up to. The fortress is built on both sides of a waterfall fueled ravine, and is made up of seven floors stretching from near the top of the canyon to the very bottom. Along the way, many of the floors are sketchily connected together with one tile wide bridges that I had initially hoped would lead to a constant stream of falling dwarves. But dwarves, it turns out, are surprisingly nimble, and the bridges were just useful for getting around. When I first embarked and settled on this location for the main floor, I was dreaming of a fortress filled with hundreds of dwarves requiring dozens of big rooms, which is why I gave myself so much vertical space. After 6 years and just 60 dwarves though, it would probably be fair to say that I was a little too ambitious with my plans. You don't really need rooms for 8 nobles when the peak of power in your fortress is Misdem the Mayor. Why this fortress struggled for migrants might not be immediately obvious at first glance, but having been the one in control of it for the past 6 years, I think there are a couple of possible answers. The first is that the waterfall that created the whole ravine also took every bard, merchant, and liaison that dared dip a toe into its raging waters for an impromptu cliff diving session, which left us unable to trade or negotiate for years at a time. The second is that I left a dozen wood hauling dwarves to die in an old man ambush while I was busy finding a new video to watch. I may purposefully put my dwarves in terrible situations when I record videos, but losing a quarter of my population to casual carelessness was a real throwback to how I played the game years ago, and my parent civilization wasn't the biggest fan. Which actually leads to the third answer, which is that multiple dwarves went berserk over unfulfilled wooden log strange mood requests, and killing one and caging the other did little to boost the spirits of their friends and family in the fortress especially when the one we killed came back as a vengeful ghost. It's really too bad that a little bit of neglect and murder was enough to drive dwarves away from such a cool fortress, because it meant that after the 6 years it took for me to get everything ready, only the 60 dwarves that were left behind got to be a part of Operation Fishbowl. You see, I may have had some ulterior motives when I picked this location and filled each of the floors with windows peering into the ravine. While a canyon fortress is cool enough on its own, my true dream for this fortress was always damming the river and turning the area between the two sides of the fortress into a fishbowl for my dwarves to enjoy. That's why I built this dam downstream from the fortress, so that once I sealed off the bottom six floors by retracting all the bridges and constructing walls and all the empty sides of the bridge walkways, I could tell my dwarves to pull a lever and the flow of water down the river would stop, causing the water level in the reservoir to begin rising past the windows, bridges, and walls, keeping the fortress safe and dry. This project might not be the biggest or most complex I've ever worked on, but it might just be my favorite thing that I've ever built in Dwarf Fortress. At no point in the planning stage was I 100% sure that windows were leak proof, or that damming the river wouldn't have some catastrophic consequences somewhere down the line, and yet, as the river rose up the ravine layer by layer, nothing too tragic seemed like it was going to happen. There was a brief moment of tension when I wasn't sure if the spillway at the top of the dam was wide enough to handle the full flow of the river, but it eventually stabilized with just enough water being pushed through to not cause problems for the next layer up. My design did somewhat accidentally turn a one waterfall that would hurt and drown visitors into one waterfall that would drown them and another that would hurt them, which didn't really improve the safety of the fortress, but the dwarves that stuck around to see Operation Fishbowl come to fruition were hardy enough that I thought they wouldn't mind. And besides, even if the waterfalls kill two visitors a season instead of one, the view is probably still worth it. In the end I have to say that this is probably about as perfect of a vacation fortress as I could have asked for. It ticked off all the boxes. A design that prioritized form over function, check and check. An interesting environment for my dwarves to navigate, check. Just enough neglect driven chaos to keep things interesting, check. And a pointless but fun project to top it all off, check. This fortress might not get a lot of attention from me going forward because it's in a side world that I don't plan on revisiting, 
but I think I've left it in a good semi-submerged spot, and who knows, maybe someday in the future, I'll think of a way to fill my makeshift aquarium with fish instead of skeletons, and I'll have to return. But for now I'll just say, thanks for watching, an extra thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.